Hello. How are you, gentlemen? We are doing very well. Because you know why we're doing well? Because you and God bless you and Buck. You yeah. said something last night as Barker and I were watching the game that just it, it, it almost it was almost a soul cleansing experience for me. And basically, you know what you guys said? You probably can't remember. You're going, Jesus, what do we say exactly? Hmm. What you said was, this is what playoff baseball is all about. Basically, get used to this. And I started yeah. thinking, you know what? Yeah, it's great. We can hammer on and on about the runners in scoring position. Vladdy's not doing this, et cetera, et cetera. They're at the point now in the season where just win the freaking games and go to the postseason. <laughs> yeah, last night felt like a playoff game. It, it at absolutely least it did, to me, did. Right? Absolutely. And, and, yeah, and, and I may be, you know, I may be in the minority here, guys, but I, I love those kinds of games where every pitch matters. Like, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, ten to nine is great, but I think two to one comes with an unbelievable amount of tension on every pitch, and and it did feel like a playoff game. And I'm with you. You know, a couple of guys uh, down on the field, not players, like other media members and stuff. We. Um, you, you know, the phrase dog days of August was mentioned, and, and I respectfully disagree. I'm with you. I, I kind of feel like this series is the beginning of go time. Friday, in all likelihood, mm -hmm. we will see Trevor Richards, Kevin Kiermeyer, Matt Chapman, and Bo Bichette. We don't know 100% for sure, but they're coming. Um, and then, you know, they have the weekend series with Cincinnati, and then where do they go? Baltimore, right? Yeah. Like, it's on. It's it's. Uh, I think it is go time. I think it's going to feel like September for the next six weeks, not just the four weeks in September. So uh, we also we talked to Casey Candell. They also mentioned Chad Green looked really good today. They gave yeah, him an yes. inning. They gave him an inning and a third, I believe, today. So let I, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. But Trevor Richard, Kiermaier, and and Bo and Chapman come back. We we know how that's going to work out. Um, but Richards and Green, coupled with what they already have. How do you think, and I understand this is purely hypothetical, how do you think John Schneider works in Chad Green in particular? Mm -hmm. he, he, I mean, Trevor Richards, I think we know what Trevor Richards is going to do. But, right. man, Chad Green intrigues me. If he's at all the Chad Green we used to see. Right, because he's a guy who can do a lot of different things. He can get you six outs in the middle of a game, but if you need him in the eighth inning for three big outs, he can do that as well. Mm -hmm. And John Schneider was asked that very question in his office, and, and I don't remember who asked it. But the question was something like, do you have a specific, do you have roles in mind for Chad Green? And Schneider just kind of paused and smiled and he said, yeah, like, like he's, ex <laughs> he's excited. And, and I had the next question, which was, uh, you know, you, you guys have been there and you've heard Schneider use the phrase, raise the floor, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, on one night, it could be Jimmy Garcia to Jordan Hicks. And then on the next night, it could be Chad Green to Eric Swanson. And we haven't even talked about Mesa and Cabrera yeah. or the closer Romano or Trevor Richards, yeah. right, who can do so many different things. Like to say that they are days away from having the best bullpen of the Vladdy Bow era, if you want to call it that, is, is the understatement of a lifetime. Like this is easily the deepest, best Best velocity, most swing and miss, most effective bullpen that they will have had in the last five years, and especially when now that Romano's back and when Richards comes back and when Green comes up, whenever that is, you, you know, and you got to like the starting pitching too. Uh, not to circle back before we need to get there, they just got to hit, and if they if they can hit reasonably well, I think they can beat any team in the American League. I don't know about Atlanta, but uh, if they can hit reasonably well, they are well-equipped to have a deep run in the playoffs, assuming they get into the first place. Yeah, they have the ninth most walks since the break, which is a big deal, right? You want to work yeah. counts, that means their bats are getting better. That's what we've been preaching. You know, be a tough out. right? You might, you're going to get out because the pitching's really good, but be a tough out. You're starting to see some dudes that are, you know, extending counts and those kind of things. Uh, Dan, I love playing these kind of games where – we sort of know who's going to pitch game one for playoff start tomorrow. <laughs> let's let's play it. This is fun. All right. Because their starting pitching is so good, and you got four dudes that I don't think a fan could be mad of where any four of those pitched. But I do think we know who would pitch game one. Yeah. Would I, I would you be mad? You think fans would be mad if you say Kikuchi through game two? Well, let me back up for five seconds on walks because one of the things I do on my scorecard is just for each guy in the order, just one of the little notes I make underneath his name is what he did in the last game. And I so for Brandon Belt today, I wrote one for three with a walk. And I'm like, 
I write that every day for Brandon Bell. Like, mm-hmm. every day is yeah. one for three with a walk. And it's kind of sneaky quiet, but it's really important. And, and um, you know, I don't know. I, I guess Bo goes two and Bell goes three and Vladdy goes four, and they'll figure all that out. But um, in terms of who starts where, my first answer, and it's an honest one, is six weeks is still a long time. Absolutely. And, right? And yeah. um, Kikuchi could continue on the upswing, and another guy could take a step back, and we don't know. So six weeks is a long time, and – it depends who you're playing. So those that is the ultimate double cop-out answer I've just <laughs> given you here on this question. But you could make a case for a lot of guys. And, and, you know, Kevin, you said you got four dudes. I guess Ryu is the fifth, and he's kind of a dude too, yeah. right? And, and look at look at how he's been pitching. Here's the one thing I, I really don't want to see, and I get why they did it in 2020, but this is different. I'm I'm really not big on well. Let's use this guy once through the order, and then we'll bring Kikuchi in for once through the order. And maybe it's the smart thing to do, and maybe that's what the analytics say you can do. But it's not what I would like to see. I would like to say these are the best three starting pitchers that we think should go versus this particular team. Um, you know, you have another guy in reserve if you have extra innings. You have a guy in reserve for game one of the next series, and I know you're not supposed to think that way, but uh, I, I would be like, Gosman, figure it out, figure it out. And, and, and I mm-hmm. think it's too early to figure it could be Kikuchi, it could be Bassett, it could be Barrios. Um, I don't think it's crazy if it's Ryu, but I'll, I'll tell you this. It's rare to have five starting pitchers on a playoff roster, mm-hmm. especially – for a, a three out of uh, a two out of three, right? Yeah. For a for a first round, so you could have a guy like Ryu if you're in, uh, not even on the playoff roster, then he could be a starting pitcher in the next series. Like uh, that's the kind of depth that they have. But again, they got to get there first. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you know, a couple of things that that I thought of when you were talking. First of all, you know, given the manager's experience with Kevin Gossman last year in the playoffs, where John has admitted that he took him out too early. I'm I I'm with you. I mean, I I, I hope we see. I mean, I just hope we see. I hope we see the the playoff game managed as much as possible as a as a regular game when it comes to pitching. The other thing too, I wonder with Jose Barrios. I think a lot of it may depend on home and road because Jose Barrios is a much better pitcher at home. He's been he's been good this year, yep. but he's a be, he's a better dude at home. Yeah, I, I think you factor everything in. Is it Minnesota? Is it Tampa Bay? Is it Baltimore? Is it Boston? Is it Houston? You know, they're all different, right? And and I think you got to look at that. But I but. But, again, if you forced me to give just one answer, my one mm-hmm. answer would be six weeks is a long time. Yep. And, and, I, and in, in a good way, I hope these things have a way of sorting themselves out. Uh, Witt has the most hits in the American League since the break with yeah. 42. He's hitting 438 in his last seven games. He's hitting 322, leading off for the Blue Jays. His line drive percentage has went up. Hitting the ball up the middle percentage has went up. He's hitting 359 on the first pitch, which that for me is the biggest part of this. Because of how nasty secondary pitches are, you got to be aggressive in your zone early. He's very good at doing that. And, oh, by the way, he's hitting 269 with two strikes. It could be real tough not to bring him back next year. I know he'll be 35, which is a big number, but some people don't look 35. And for me, he's one of those guys. You know what? He told me in Dunedin this year, we were talking and just kind of getting to know each other a little better. And he said, I know I'm 34. He goes, but not everybody's 34 is the same 34. And he said, I'm not knocking anybody else's 34. I'm just saying I don't feel 34. And and I think part of what makes Witt go, and obviously he's played a lot of baseball, but he didn't get to the major leagues till he was like 26, 27 years old, right? He was not a first-round pick. He was a guy who had to scratch and claw to get everything that he's gotten. Um, he obviously keeps himself in good shape. Remember, he was the uh, consecutive games guy for mm-hmm. like four years, right? I don't know what it was. It, I mean, he was no threat to Cal Ripken, but it was 500 and something. And, and he's a guy who's used to playing every day. And it, if you want to make John Schneider smile, say, hey, what's Whit Merrifield meant to the team this year? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, again, he may not be an analytics darling. He doesn't hit the ball all that hard. But you want a guy who goes up to the plate with a plan? He's that guy. You want a guy who does well with two strikes? He's that guy. You want a guy who understands what his job is based on inning score, base runners, and outs? He's that guy. He's a very, very smart player. He's also, you know, stealing bases, playing two different positions. He gives them flexibility. How many guys on this team have been more valuable to them this year than Whit Merrifield? It's it's not a very big number. So it, it um, you know, again, off season is very interesting, and and I'd I'd love to see him back. I think Whit, and I'm. 
happy for him because ball players should get what ball players can get. I think he's made himself into a very uh, an, a very attractive free agent in, in the off season. The other part too, the Blue Jays. Um, you know, how do they feel about the other options they have at both sure. second base and third base? And we don't need to talk about match happen, but he'll be a free agent too, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the guys they're bringing are infielders, right? A lot of the guys who are AAA and interesting are infielders right now. So that factors in as well. Yeah. 